Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to Omega Conversations. My name is Carol Donahoe, and I'd like to say hello to our friends on Facebook Live and also our Zoom audience. Today, the conversation will be focused on relationships. Many of you have been sheltering at home, at home um, for quite a while now. Here in New York, we have just completed eight weeks. Um, and that's a lot of time to be with our nearest and our dearest. So we've decided to call in our relationship experts, Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt, to give us some tips on how to strengthen our relationships during this time. Harville and Helen are the co-creators of Imago Relationship Therapy. They are the ones who developed the concept of the conscious relationship. They're the co-authors of several books, the most famous of them being Getting the Love That You Want. It sold more than four million copies worldwide. They are also the parents of six children and the grandparents of six grandkids. Um, they have been teaching together at Omega for over 20 years and are very dear friends of ours. Before I bring them on, I want to give you a little construct of how today will go. Um, for the first uh, part of the session, they will be doing a teaching, talking and teaching us some of the things that, some tips for this time. And then they're going to do a demonstration for us. And at the end of the demonstration, we're gonna do something a little different. Rather than taking questions from the audience, what we'd like to do is get your comments on what your experience was of that demonstration. So how did it impact you? Um, what are your thoughts that are coming up in experiencing that demo? So um, that's a little bit of how today will lay out. And without further ado, I am very happy to introduce you all to Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt. Um, thank you, Carol. Uh, and we're delighted to be here, and we want to do our uh, uh, on-ramp of, of um, saying something to you that may be a little bit shocking, which is, shall we do it? Yay. You are wonderful. And we want to start with that so that you know that that's how we view you and everyone, that we human beings are wonderful and that sometimes uh, in our wonder and in our joy, we also uh, uh, find ourselves in a crisis, which we are in now. And that uh, the idea of being, as Carol said, at home uh, has been really challenging. And Helen's going to pick up and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm going to do some overview comments and Harville will go into details. Carol said tips. Okay, Carol, this is a big tip. Harville and I, the last nine months, we read everything about the neurosciences. And for the first time, we started reading that healthy relationships, guess what? You don't get sick as often and you live longer. We had never seen that in the scientific, scientific magazines, and it strengthens your immune system. So there's an imperative to have healthy relationships if you want to keep yourself as safe as possible. Um, so that for the first time in the history of the world, the relational sciences are teachable due to the breakthroughs in the neurosciences in the 1990s. And basically, we have a new definition of a relationship. A lot of people think a, a relationship is someone you've known a while or a long time. Mm -hmm. We take pains to say a relationship is two people and the energy field, the space between them. And the relationship isn't just about this person or that person, but how two people, the look in your eye, the tone of your voice, how you say things to each other, that this is what makes the relationship, not that or that. Um, and so basically, Harville's a brilliant theoretician. He simplifies everything. He just basically says, if there's safety between two people, they can relax and have a good relationship. If there's any anxiety here, 
people get worried and they go, what's going to happen next? And they're anxious and they lose connection. And basically, safe conversation restores safety. Uh, we have uh, in two ways, a dialogue process. That's three steps that we'll tell you more about and a commitment to zero negativity. And that means, uh, and having affirmations daily to keep things less negative. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. You can deal with any of your issues and that's what we teach you how to do with the dialogue process. Yes, and the reason we talk about dialogue or and also talk about a dialogue is a safe way to have a conversation is that talking is the most dangerous thing people do. And we've spent all of our lives working with people who couldn't talk without uh, polarizing or producing conflict. And at a time when you're uh, confined and all of your life patterns are changed, the level of frustration for everybody is going to increase. And if you have a good relationship, it's going to be stressed. If you have a difficult relationship, it'll be stressed even more because you don't have the resources. So what we have worked on uh, and want to share with you is that if you uh, can talk without criticizing, point number one, listen without judging, point number two, and connect around and beyond your differences, then you create this state that Helen talks about as a safe conversation. And when you add to that a quality that is absolutely essential to create safety, which is zero negativity. And we know that's a challenge because negativity is the bread and butter that most of us live off of. And we think that we have to keep our judgmental eye out so that we can regulate people or they will do something bad to us or other people or, or to themselves. Uh, but negativity is a toxin. It's sort of like the virus. It's sort of like any toxin in the air. Negativity uh, it assaults our immune system, uh, makes, uh, it, it decreases its power, makes us vulnerable to uh, anything, any, any kind of disease. So zero negativity is the best decision anybody can make. So at home now when we're under stress, uh, to think about how can I talk about what I'm needing and what I'm feeling, and we'll demonstrate that in a minute, without making the other person bad. How can I do that so that I get clear of what I need and, and can ask for it in a way that will respond to that? And then the third thing we've discovered is you can take all the negativity out of your relationship and there's still something missing, and that the relationship needs to be affirming, that uh, two people in it need to be willing to say to each other, I like you, you're amazing, uh, I care about you, or the thing we just did, you are wonderful, to flood them. Anything that pushes positive energy toward another person. And I think the thing, Helen, we should say is that while uh, our, our coin and trade usually, and at Omega in particular, has been couples for, for decades, that we're now talking about the space between you're talking about is between any two people, whether it's a parent and a child, whether it's uh, employees at work, or whoever it might be, it's a little more intense, the energy here, when you're in an intimate partnership because of the meaning of each other and the history with each other, but it's there uh, for everybody. So what we want to do is to be sure we talk in such a way and remove uh, negativity in such a way and add the affirmations in such a way that this space in here is always uh, safe, and we call it congruent or cohesive energy. And when that's there, then it impacts your psychoneurology, your neurochemistry, improves your immune system. And whether we're having a crisis or not, it's a good thing to have a healthy immune system because you live longer with less diseases. So what Helen and I would like to do is to uh, move from uh, talking about this to demonstrating. Before we do that, I want to bring up a slide to show you some of the steps of the, uh, of the process. So uh, the Omega staff has our slide and they'll show one right now. Okay, so Imago Dialogue and Safe Conversations are two kind of same things. So what do we want to say here is that we teach people to do this in a really structured way. It's like if you came to us for a tennis lesson, 
we would teach you the physics of movement of your arm and your racket in relation to the wind and hitting the ball because that's how you learn to play tennis. So we've learned that uh, everybody needs to have a lesson. They need to have uh, rules, the rules, rules of engagement in order to talk well. So one of the things that we ask people to practice is how to honor boundaries. And the way you do that, if you want to have a conversation, you always say to somebody, is now a good time to talk? Can I talk about what this challenge is doing for me and how I'm feeling? Um, so that honoring boundaries, and the reason that's important, everybody's running a movie on their screen in their minds. And when we walk up to them and say, blah, 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 I'm going to tell you, I'm really scared. What we're doing is putting our movie in their movie house on their screen. And usually they, if they're nice people, they might say, well, okay. But if they're not, they might say, get your movie out of my screen. Um, but the point is, it should establish boundaries. When somebody is then talking to you, we practice a mirroring process. So you always say to somebody who's talking to you, well, let me see if I got that. So that you mirror back. And the reason we do that is because there are mirror neurons in the brain that actually are activated and do something to your sense of safety when you mirror back. And then since most of us uh, aren't quite accurate in what we hear, the, the uh, people who, who measure hearing say, we get only about 20 to 30% even when we're relaxed. And when we're upset, we don't get anything. Like the so, science shows. The science shows. I like shows. how you quote the, the science. science shows that, that you, people think they're hearing someone else accurately, yeah. and they ain't. And they're getting about 30% <laughs> of it. So you need to always do an accuracy check. Did I get that? That people are always hearing that. And then the thing that makes a conversation really safer is if you'll say something that shows interest and curiosity. We call it, is there more about that? And Will will do uh, something about that. And then uh, if you have time, you can say, well, let me see if I got all that, everything you said. Uh, you may, and then you say, Valerie, it makes sense. And I can imagine you must feel something in that sympathy. So you don't have to do all of these with every conversation. But if you have these sentence stems, then you can actually make the conversation safe. And what we would say is, if you only pick one of these to practice, pick the first one, so that anytime you want to talk, ask permission and set a boundary so that a person says, okay, I've got my movie screen clear now to receive your projection, your movie, and I can listen. If they don't have it clear, they can't listen, not listening, and that'll produce conflict. So that would be the thing. It's so fine move. to say, it's fine to say, um, if Harville were to say, is now a good time to share some thoughts yeah. I have about new theory? Well, am I doing something else? And I yeah. go, Oh, honey, listen, how about an hour? Because I'm in the middle of something else. Yeah. And we defer it to an hour. And then I turn around and I give him my undivided attention. Yeah. So um, and this that, is, that, that asking for an appointment process is really important. And this is another thing that's just generally human that we now know is that when I'm talking to Helen, if I have her attention, it does something to me that is almost indescribable. But if I'm talking to her and I don't have her attention, that is she's thinking about something else, she's multitasking, or she looks away, it does something to me that's also almost indescribable. And we now know that has nothing to do with my psychology, that this is just the, simply the way human beings are wired, that we are relational creatures. And when we are managing those relationships safely and connecting and supporting each other, we do well. We have what we call relational well-being. And when we don't, we have, um, and, and relational well-being, by the way, is the requirement for emotional well-being. We used to think it was the other way around. But now we know relational well-being produces emotional and cognitive well-being. And the way to get that is what we call relational competence. That is, you have to learn how to talk so that you don't um, uh, uh, cause other people to react. And you have to learn how to listen without reacting to what the person is saying. So competency, relational competency, is essential for relational well-being. And it's really good skill to pick up now that you have, um, you're confined in your home and you have a lot of time to practice how to get along because you could come out of this with a much better relationship than you went into it with, whether it's already good or whether it needs some improvement.
So could we see the next slide? And I want to just show you that. And then we will do turn all this into a demo. So one of the things we usually do first at Omega when we're there is we ask people to do this mirroring slide of an appreciation. Helen and I are going to do something similar to this today, but something a little bit more relevant to the situation. But you can see how the conversation might go. There's a sender and a receiver. And the sender would say, well, one thing I appreciate about you is, and the receiver would say, well, let me see if I got that. Did I get it? The responder says, well, yes or no. And if no, then they send some more. Uh, then it, when they say, yeah, you got it, you see, is there more about that? Um, and then uh, they can go deeper and say, well, when I experience that appreciation, I feel uh, really loved. Um, and that reminds me when I was little, I felt loved like that. And there's the mirror back, did I get it? Is there more? And then you summarize. So this is kind of the structure that we go through this process. There are two more things that's too, too complicated to teach in this short period of time, but we call it validating and empathizing. And validating is simply saying something like, well, that makes sense. Yeah, you, you, you know, what you're saying make, is, uh, sounds true to me. I know it's true for you. That makes sense. And I can imagine when you uh, have that experience, you must feel uh, exciting and warm. Uh, so these are all engagements. This is called social engagement. This is called safe conversation. This is called immune system strengthening. And we want to show you now how to do that. So we're going to turn. Oh, no, no. No, we have 15 more minutes. We have 15 more minutes yeah. before that. Oh, uh -huh. then, then. Yeah. So, well, let me make a comment and then okay. you can talk about zero negativity. Okay. Then I'll go okay. into that. Um, that first, yeah, people don't listen well. And we, we think we do. Yeah. And just to say that society from the time we're nine months old, a year and a half, five, seven, our parents get so excited when we talk. <laughs> we're rewarded when we talk. Uh, when we're at school, we get better grades and then we maybe graduate better from high school and get in a better college. If we present a paper and we can talk and uh, compete on a, the debate, team and uh and then we get in a better job and then we get promotions at job and so that we get rewarded and no one rewards us when we listen and so you really um the dialogue teaches you to make sure that you're listening right before yeah. you react yeah. um and um shall i mention that is there more yes no. say more about so that. um so Harville says something to me. I say, well, let me see if I got it. I mirror him back. And then I say, is there more? Well, for some reason, people who would do this process would go, is there more is the magic phrase. No. And we didn't understand why, but everyone said that was the magic phrase. And basically we figured it out that um, when I say, is there more to Harville, a, a lot of my life, I tried to know Harville, and you don't even need to ask me how he, I, how he's feeling because I know, and you don't <laughs> need to ask uh, him how what's he gonna what's he doing because I know I pay attention. Um, is there more? Is not knowing someone, and Harville hates him when I know him. He loves me to ask him questions about him, but this is an example of is there more about that? No, and that relaxes the other person and yeah. we call that shifting from judgment to curiosity and that is um when you move into curiosity and wondering about your partner instead of judging them that is the dream come true in a relationship and your partner gets curious and wonders about you and then yeah. both of you are on a journey together um, the the wonder judge from judgment to curiosity and wonder that puts you in this central between the left brain and the right brain hemisphere. The place of wonder is the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, and it releases dopamine, acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. And you just relax. When I I love wondering about Harville, and uh, and it's it's um, it. Dan Siegel says that that promotes neural integration. Tolerating ambiguity promotes neural integration. So all that we're talking about is um, how to be safe with another person. Um, 
and that we know now from um, I think I think about thirty years of research that safety is not negotiable for human thriving. You can survive without safety, as most of us do, and as most all human beings have done for all the centuries we've been here. Safety has not been a human experience, or at least a widespread human experience, maybe locally in family or tribe or or, or, or occasionally some small group, but not generally. And safety is not also existent in most people's relationships because people are, are have has expressed negativity, um, not knowing that it's creating danger. When you when you say something negative, you trigger you trigger what's called the amygdala in the brain, which shoots chemicals into your bloodstream called um, cortisol. And and uh, when that happens, then your brain goes on alert. You go into defenses. Now you have to protect yourself. So that's why we talk about zero negativity. And I want to say just a little bit more about negativity. And basically the negativity is, I, I think that I, I think I said this, but I want to emphasize it, is a toxin. Um, and it's a toxin because anybody who hears a negative thought, whether it's in an environment that, and it's not even directed at them, all of us have a brain that has been wired for millions of years to hear a negative sound. It was sometimes a sound we can't interpret, but if it's a sound that's loud or a sound that has negative energy to it, somebody yelling, they're mad, the brain goes into alert because it doesn't know whether or not that negative energy is coming to it. So negativity, we've been wired to respond to negativity. And now we are overwired and we respond to it and it, it becomes defensive. So what we mean by negativity is literally that, that you remove negative energy and negative phrases like, what? Where did you get that? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's ridiculous. That, that's ridiculous. Didn't you close the garage door? <laughs> Um, you know, are, are you wearing your mask? Are you going to, you want to be, you want to kill people? <laughs> um, and all of those are called put downs. And any time that you put, put somebody, you do a negative, you put them down and negation, a negative is a negation. You are not okay the way you are. That's what the negativity say. You're not okay the way you are. You have to be somebody else or do something different in order to get my approval. So then when we know that that's the way, whoever it is, our boss or our partner or our child or whatever feels that about us or we feel that about them, uh, we're going to be doing our damnedest to um, protect ourselves from them in whatever way we do that. Right. Being, I mean, if Harville suddenly is critical of me, uh, there's just anxiety yeah, in the space between. And I just, or if I do certain things that are very negative to him. He just goes, yep. forget it, Helen. Just, <laughs> yes. And he's right, because yep. my job is to be safe for Harville. Yep. And that's the mm -hmm. job of all human beings for all human beings. Mm -hmm. And the only thing on the planet most human beings are scared of mm -hmm. is another human being. Mm -hmm. Now, again, remember, the safe conversation or Imago process you can bring up any, any, any oh, yeah. issue, right. but we teach you how to bring up issues in a safe way. Yeah. You can bring up your frustrations, you can bring up problems. It's not that you need to cover things up. Yeah. And, um, and it, you know. You just can't make. The we're other not gonna be able to get to that part in this. Yeah. Um, but you just can't make the other person hour. the problem for your experience. You can say, I feel and think rather than you. So we say never use the word you uh, unless it's something like you are wonderful and I love you. But if you move into negative energy with the word you, it triggers a defense. And then the last thing before we do the, the demo, we're back close now, yeah, I think we're close. is the affirmations. Now, when Helen and I first began to practice uh, zero negativity about 20 years ago, uh, we thought for a while that we got the negativity out that things would be great um, and it was better uh, granted it's better just to not have those negative energies but something was missing mm 
Yeah, we didn't and, talk very and much. And we didn't know what to do if we, if we weren't if we <laughs> weren't a lot of silence. <laughs> negative, what, what do we do? And what we learned was that our brains are, our brains are, are, are action oriented. The brain's designed to do things. And, when, and, and negativity is a defense that has been used for millions of years. So when you take it out, the brain says, well, how do I protect myself now? So until it finds a new way to do it, it just goes in what we call a cycle. And the homeostasis uh, is, is ruptured. It just goes in a cycle. And you get more anxious. Then you do really weird things when you're anxious. So we finally figured out what we needed to do was to say, hey, I see you. Or uh, let's go for a walk. Or um, you are a wonderful person. Um, thank you for bringing me that cup of coffee. Um, so the brain now learned that if I gave Helen positive input, of all different kinds, like let's take a walk, let me look in your eye for a few minutes, uh, you're available for a hug, anything that affirmed her as a human being who was okay, not judged by me, okay, not judged by me, just wonderful, not only that, but pos not just neutral, but, but positive, that then the brain knew what to do, and he said, you know what, uh, to mimic the brain, this is better than negativity, I'm surviving better now because the negativity was generally because I wasn't getting these connections, these physical and emotional relational things. Now I'm getting what I really want, which is to be with, to be hugged, to have a smile and soft tone of voice. So then, so we put together this, learn how to talk without criticizing, listen without judgment, connect beyond differences, remove all negativity and add affirmations. Helen and I do, Three affirmations every day, every night. It's the last thing we do before we go to bed. And we do some things even in the morning. We do some things like, like flooding, like we did when we came on here, like walk into the kitchen and say, hey, there's my bride or something. Pushing energy toward each other. The human brain needs positive energy. This is an, an and energy so that's field. the way we do it. And then... The look in his eye, the tone of his voice, yes. my words, my look in the eye, is, it creates an energy field that makes it safe and fun and joyful to be together. And then you can do two <clears> things. <throat> you can play together. Wow, can play together. <laughs> and then when you feel safe, you can create together. So when you're into spontaneous play and into spontaneous creativity, we think now you, we are into who we really are. And this time of being at home, to remind you again why we're saying all this, all this can be practiced now at home because you've got more time to do it. And you can take it then back to work. Take it, uh, kids can uh, teach it to your kids and they can take it to school and it can uh, or go out into the community. And this can be uh, the utilization of, them, of the worst crises in history for one of the best things that we could do, which is to make relationships safe. So... It's time to do a demo. Now do a demo. We were asked by the team, by Carol and others, to um, um, do a demo. And um, the topic we chose is, um, is there something um, that I wish Harville would do now that we're quarantined at home to handle the quarantine? Okay, so Helen's going to go through the process and ask me for an appointment. Now, this is an example of learning to ask for what you want. A lot of people know what they don't want, and they talk about it all the time. And we really tell people you need to learn to ask for what you want, and you're on the road to getting it. Um, so, um, um, so, okay, um, Harville. So yes. I think uh, with the camera rolling and the people watching us right now and hearing about the dialogue, um, is this a good time that I could model it for, for them uh, by uh, asking if you're available to hear something that would be meaningful for me now that we're quarantined at home? So you're asking if I'm available to hear something meaningful for you since we're quarantined at home. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm available. Um, well, I'm going to cry, actually. You were talking about appreciations before going to bed, and that is what I love. 
so much. Okay. So can I mirror that? So I was talking about appreciations about before we go to bed. And that's something you love so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is there more? Yeah, because um, we're both really busy during the day and we accomplish mm -hmm. a lot and we adore our family and we're doing this and then we adore our work. Yes. Uh, and we try to um, exercise. But when you sit down at night and give me three appreciations, you just always make me feel seen. You mm -hmm. language who I am to you. And um, <clears throat> that just means the world to me. So we're sort of getting this. You are, we're busy doing all kinds of things and also impacted by um, the um, quarantine. But when I take time at, um, in the evening at bedtime and give you three appreciations, it, and that would say they get, it, it touches you and means so much to you. I think I missed the exact word. Well, the appreciations you say make me feel seen. The appreciations I say make you feel you, seen. Like you see me. Like I see and you. And you see yeah. my efforts. Okay. Like I'm seeing, like I see you and see your efforts yes. as well. Am I getting that? Yes. Yeah. So is there more about that? Yeah. So, well, let me see if I've got, got it all and a little bit summarize it that um that basically you're saying that you want uh, to tell me about although we're busy and doing all kinds of things that the thing that's really most meaningful to you in summary if i've got it mm -hmm. is when we stop at night and do the three appreciations that you experience uh, being seen and yeah. that that's one of the most meaningful things uh that we do yes for you. Yeah, that's really helping during this quarantine time. Did I get it all? Yes. And that really helped during the quarantine mm -hmm. time. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing that with yes. me. Yes. And you know, that was so brief. Let me just say to, you know, a lot of you may have heard us in our workshops and some of you not, um, but we almost divorced 20 years ago. And we announced to our family we were divorcing mm. and we announced to then the Amago community, global, all the, everybody. Mm -hmm. We love teaching this stuff. We don't know how to do it. Um, <clears throat> and, and we don't want to be dishonest. And so we feel like we have to let you know we're divorcing. And um, then one day, something, there's a story, and we added zero negativity. And when we added zero negativity and appreciations to our marriage that saved our marriage, and I have the marriage of my dreams. And we say that uh, if any of you are watching and you think, oh, Harville and Helen, they're compatible and they can do all this stuff and I'm with a jerk and it's not gonna work with me. <laughs> we were pretty jerky too. And one of, the, one, of the things, one of the ways I was jerky was at night before going to bed, that's when I needed to tell Harville what he did wrong that day. Because the kids weren't interrupting and the phone wasn't ringing and I had this undivided attention. <laughs> that was a terrible time, going to bedtime. Mm -hmm. And now, no problems at night and just appreciations. Okay. So, so Helen, um, there's now a good time to share with you something that would be meaningful to me during this time of, of our... COVID yeah, yeah, I'm so glad you're asking because I'd really like to know specifically. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for being available. Um, the, the thing I've been thinking about, what is uh, most important to me? And, and I think that the most important thing for me is to be sure that I don't um, engage in a, send you any negative energy uh, in a message or a gaze or tone or in any way, anything that would um, trigger uh, you experiencing something negative. Mm -hmm. So so you want to make sure that inadvertently you aren't doing something in our relationship that makes me withdraw and I experience this negatively. Did I get that? Yeah. Yeah. And is there more? Well, the more is that um, 
what I would like from you during this time is if you do experience me um, doing something, and it'll be inadvertent because I'm, I'm not intending to do something negative, but if I inadvertently, whether intended to or not, uh, uh, send you a negative signal of any kind, tone of voice, eye contact, or just impatience, or just lots of stress going on now, mm -hmm. um, and to be a negative toward you around that. I would like you to send me a signal that you received uh, a, um, an, an impact of negative energy, like, um, so, what? so if you do in a, it accidentally say something and you yeah. don't mean to be negative, yeah. but it feels negative to me, uh, you'd like me to send you a signal yeah. and like, let you like, know. Like something like, uh, you could say, ouch, or watermelon, or marshmallow, or okay. wow, or okay. whatever. A little something code that says, word. I got, I got, you know, ouch. I got an ouch. <laughs> and, and then when you, when you do that, then I, um, want to uh, stop and be sure I know what it what it was um, and so for me to use a code word yeah. uh, that then then you'll you'll want to stop and make sure that uh, you you let me tell you what it was yeah. so that you'll um, yeah. not do it that way yeah. again yeah. right okay and, um, and there's more, I, I, I and there's more I, want to, I want to say and that that reason I want to do that is that I want, because I know any negativity ruptures are connected. Right. So I want to restore the flow of connecting between us immediately if I rupture it in any way. So that's my request for you during our time of crisis. So that's the request. So would you mirror that back uh, And because you know that anything you're inadvertently or accidentally doing negative, Will, will I'll disappear? I'll I might disappear or withdraw or feel bad, yeah. and you don't want to do that. And you want me to give you a little code word. Yeah. Am and, I getting that? Uh, almost all. I want to restore connecting because, as soon as possible. Because you want to restore connection. Yeah, I don't so much want the signal because mm -hmm. that would be unpleasant, but I don't want the rupture in right. our connecting. So I want to restore that as soon as possible okay. because that. That's the most meaningful thing in my life is our is our safe between and our mm -hmm. flow. So because that's the most meaningful thing in your life is our flow and you want to restore connection. You got it. So what is the word that I would use? Um what word would feel good? I well I think marshmallow would marshmallow. be good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Say marshmallow. We've actually done this before. <laughs> Yeah. So that yeah. sometimes, but we change the code words. So, so but yeah. anyway, thank you for um, for letting me know what would be meaningful mm -hmm. for you. Okay. And Kobe. Yeah. Okay. And so, could you tell me back everything I said? I want to be sure. Uh, I got the it summary all. is um, that what would be meaningful for you when we're quarantined at home is when you do something that's an ouch. I do not swallow it, but I let you know in a very respectful way, a code word like marshmallow yes. or something like that. Like that. Because you want to restore connecting. Immediately. Immediately. Okay. Did I get that? You got it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. Okay. So that's um, a simple uh, thing about uh, a minor thing. Now, the thing that is um, magical about this process is you can talk about any topic. Uh, we think about this as a as a vehicle, like a truck, and you can put any cargo on the this truck bed, uh, and that shows my farm background, <laughs> uh, a truck bed, and any cargo on it, and it'll take it to market. So, meaning, if you use the structure, you can talk about anything yeah. without mm -hmm. conflict and without polarizing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when you talk about it with this kind of um, authenticity you actually feel closer. Like I feel closer to Helen, even though we were just demoing it as a teaching process, the brain doesn't actually care that we were demoing it because we are experiencing each other's energy, eye contact and flow as if it were a conversation we were having in our apartment that was real. So what we want to do now, and are we down to the last 15, about the last 15 minutes? We have about 
four more minutes, I think. Okay, so why don't we switch into uh, feedback unless you have something else that you want to say. Um, uh, anyway, uh, quarter till is the feedback time. Um, Do you have see. more you want to say? Let's see. Um, so, yeah, oh, that this dialogue now, the next thing is if you're mad or angry or you're frustrated, mm -hmm. you've learned the dialogue process on something simple, mm, right. uh, not problematic. Right. You're giving each other appreciation, I mean, information about how to handle being quarantined. Um, and we talked about giving each other appreciations, but then what if something horrible has happened? Mm -hmm. Well, first, maybe you should call and Zoom with a therapist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If it's really, really bad, but if you if you can fix it yourself, convert a frustration into a request. That is so important. Yeah. You say, um, there's something that's that I felt bad about, but I'd like to tell you what would heal that and make me feel great. Yeah. Are you available now? Yeah. And your partner might not say, actually, this is not a good time. How about tomorrow? <laughs> and you can make it tomorrow you know, when they're available um, or a few hours later. Yeah. So this, I just want to underline, Helen, what Helen's saying, that um, you can talk about, because you can talk about any topic, including a big frustration. Yes. The, 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 yeah. the truck is the dialogue. The cargo is the frustration. Yeah, this isn't avoiding and, problems. This is addressing problems. This, this is making it possible to actually resolve problems rather than avoid. Now, the thing I want to underline is all of us have frustrations. And what we discovered is behind every frustration is a wish that Helen just said. But most of us don't deal with the wish. We just say, oh, you didn't do that. You didn't close the garage door. You didn't uh, turn on the dishwasher and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but embedded in all that, if you look at it, there's something that you want. So um, Helen is famous for saying, ask for what you want. And what we say is pay attention to whatever frustration you're having, and then ask yourself, if I'm having this frustration, what do I want? Go and ask for that and let the frustration go in the garbage can because the frustration is gonna trigger negativity. Mm -hmm. But the wish can trigger a dialogue and connection and you, and the outcome is what you wanted when you were doing it negatively. Because if you do something negative, you want a positive outcome, but you can't get it with a negative input. And I mean, that's so logical. <laughs> and millions and billions of people have thought that if they were negative, they'd get something positive. Life doesn't work that way. If you're negative, you get negative back or compliance or rebellion. But if you do the positive way. So that's really a great thing to remind uh, people of. Is there more? Well, Carol has pointed out this is a chance for us to hear from others. Exactly. So what we would like to hear from is um, what Carol said at the beginning. We'd love to hear your responses. What happened to you while you were listening to our uh, cognitive input, to our little lecturer? What happened for you while you were watching us do the demo? And experiences is like, well, I was watching it and I was really bored. <laughs> um, I was watching it and I thought, what in the world is that? Uh, or that made me excited. I think I could use that. Um, and so if you could use it, if you could see it in your life, uh, anything that you have that was your experience, um, to share that with all of us. Um, and uh, Carol is going to uh, maybe you could uh, coach mod us. modulate that. Well, she's going to um, Perfect. I can. Uh, hi, guys. First of all, thank you. And thanks for that great demo. I've seen that before in different scenarios and every time. It's so helpful. Um, so what I will do is there are some people raising their hands that they'd like to uh, join in the conversation. So um, I'm going to call out the person's first name and Scott will unmute you. And then you can share with Harville and Helen um, uh, your thoughts. So Stella. Hi, 
Um, I, I actually have met Harville and uh, Helen at a workshop and thank you so much for hosting this. And um, my husband, Dimitri, I don't know if you remember either of us, but he wishes he could be here, um, but he's on a work call and I see nodding like uh, acknowledgement, so yay. Um, but I think that this was incredibly helpful and useful as a refresher for me and I hope for others as well. And what I found myself just recalling is how effective these techniques truly are. My husband and I actually used this to repair an argument that we had about a week ago or so during this uh, challenging time. And we just went for a walk and we used the dialogue and we did a meditation beforehand um, to de-escalate, you know, to emotionally regulate ourselves. And, you know, I just really, I'm going to get emotional now. So I just really wanted to express a lot of gratitude and appreciation for the work that you're continuing to do. Thank you. So nice. nice. Um, and the next one is Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Hi. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say um, I've been used, I, my husband was killed on 9-11. Oh. Our marriage of 17 years was amazing because we actually used your book and um, our communication was wonderful. And we really, I think we were as close as we were because of you guys. We never were able to take a workshop, but we followed Getting the Love You Want and your, your other books. and. I finally met another wonderful man. Wow, is that and, the guy you left? <laughs> <laughs> and I think what I, I was really moved by, and I think what we struggle with, because we've been trying it for the first time, is um, how open you guys are. I was very moved by you sharing your struggles yourselves, because I didn't know that, and I was very touched by that. I think being vulnerable is probably the hardest part of this, and. Um, I just really appreciate you sharing your own vulnerability and, you know, because I think sometimes when you take these workshops, you know, these are masters and you think, oh, they've got it all figured out. And your vulnerability really makes me realize we, we have some work to do. And one of the things I really noted and I think I struggle with is I'm really good at mirroring. So he could talk and I can just spew it all back. And I think, you know, it's a little harder on the other side. So I think the, the brief, the brevity of what you were doing is really helpful. I didn't realize you can do it in those little, little tiny pieces. I think that's really helpful. So thank you. That's a really good point. There's something that we didn't have time to talk about. It's called sender responsibility. The person who says, uh, is now a good time for me to talk to you, then I'm the sender and I send a message, try to make it succinct. No. Um, because the poor person over there can get flooded. No. And then they don't, and then they're tired of listening. <laughs> and, and one uh, way to regulate that is to make it also short. That is, don't let them go but three to five minutes each and then switch, and then switch back. Because if you do that, then you both get the same time at the, at the mic. Uh, both to speak and to listen. Uh -huh. And it sort of regulates you better and doesn't have one person talking a long time. <clears throat> that overwhelms them. We have something called the pause button. Yeah. Say I say, it's now a good time for me to tell you about da-da-da, and he says yes. And then if I say something, I start talking, oh. he can raise his hand and say, well, let me see if I can mirror that back so far so that he doesn't get overwhelmed. But you, your partner will love it if you can be succinct. <laughs> the next person coming up is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Oh, is that us? <laughs> I forgot. It's oh. That's us. Um, hi, everybody. We're marrying uh, Kevin. And um, we, um, I I'll speak for myself, really. I, I just wanted to thank you for um, doing this. So needed. Um, it, for me, it reminded me of a lot of the teachings that we already experienced. Um, we've gone through a program called Retrovi. Not many people know about that, but it uses dialogue and healthy discussions. And you know, we forgot about all of that <laughs> when when this pandemic hit. And my husband had a lot of stress with work, and um, 
I, I just, um, I'm so guilty of just pouncing, not, not asking if it's the right time, honestly, not caring if it's the right time. So that business about the resentments, like asking for what I actually wish for, instead of complaining about, you know, really I could complain about everything and criticism doesn't work. It does just put people on the defensive. These are all things I know, but what I really wanted to share with this community, how powerful this was going on. We're here on our laptop in our living room, right on the other side that you couldn't see. Our 17 year old son and his girlfriend are fighting. And he's been, for two, three days, they've been crying and going on and back and forth. And he came in and sat on the other side and I didn't want to turn you guys off. I really was like, oh, I want this. But I had to stop myself and say how hopeful it is to be able to model for our children. Mm -hmm. A, their importance to us, but be like the hope of like, you know, healthy relationships, yeah, they can go awry but there are like good ways to have discussions about things. And that idea that like taking care of yourself first is your, is your best bet into intimacy because intimacy is what we want, but we can't do it by trying to force the other one into it. You have to be self-caring and then ask for what you need. And, you know, it was just very hopeful. And I, I just thought it was amazing that he was sitting on the other side of the laptop, you know, crying that he thinks he and his girlfriend are going to break up. Mm-hmm. And he even processed it. Mm-hmm. He started, he started, to, he started saying, well, even if we did, I guess that's something people, young people go through. And I guess it would grow my character. He started saying, you know, which is, I mean, I don't know about anybody else. He's the youngest of five and um, we couldn't be any prouder the, the best evidence of our relationship has been the way our children conduct themselves because as many times as we've fallen down and had hard times, we've really, we keep working at, at having the healthy relationship that preserves both of our self-esteem. Thank so, you right. so Thank much you. for sharing. That. That's wonderful. I think we've got a couple more minutes. All right. How about Ann then? Hi, I'm Ann. Um, thank you so much for doing this workshop. It's been very helpful for me to just to hear about the whole approach and to see you demo, um, what you did. I feel like I'm at that place you were 20 years ago in my marriage and, um, I haven't ever taken a workshop with you or read your books. We have been in counseling. I'm just not in a, this, this whole pandemic has, um, not been helpful, <laughs> let's just say that. And partly because we're on different sides of the fence about wearing a mask and um, how dangerous is this and that kind of thing. Um, so I just wondered, is there a direction you could point me in to say, hey, if you want to try something. I, I took notes during the presentation today and there's a lot of helpful hints. The other thing I was wondering too is if if I just start trying to implement more of this on my own, is that, do you think, going to be that in, in and of itself be a helpful thing? So I was going to say something like that. And your first name? Anne. So thank you for your vulnerability on my empathy for you. Um, I do think I, the first thing that came to my mind is to make an appointment with a therapist <clears throat> to meet with the two of you, but you need to express it to your beloved that why don't I learned about a therapist, a Carol Kramer would be really good. She's in your area. Um, but say, I want to understand what I need to do differently yeah. because I think I'm not not doing my part yeah. and I want to know what I can do. And yeah. if you phrase it that way, um, your beloved's much more likely to do it. Yeah. That, and just one, when you approach somebody and say, if you're feeling that difficult, that bad or whatever you think he's feeling, I must be doing, I need to do something different. I must be doing something to trigger that. And the fact is, we are. We trigger each other. So to take responsibility for your contribution to it often can relax 
the other person's defense mm-hmm. so that they can say, mm-hmm. well, you know, sometimes I'm sort of nasty too. And uh, mm-hmm. so then you get into a little confession and then that's vulnerability. And then you can move then into some deeper engagement. Uh, but, but staying in the I'm innocent position, which I don't hear you in at all, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, being vulnerable and owning your responsibility and saying, is there anything I can do differently mm-hmm. to make you feel safer and better with me. Um, Perfect. That, that'll do something right there. Keep that hope alive. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're on our last one. And um, Stickers is the name. Hi. Hi. My name is Pedro Mal. And um, I, I want it. Yes. Yes. And this is my beautiful, wonderful wife, Anya. Uh, my question is regarding the technique uh, you were discuss- that you demonstrated appreciations before going to bed. I wanted to make sure I got the format correctly so that we could practice it. And I've written down some notes and I wanted to see if there were any other things that I missed. Uh, I wrote down, I saw that you were maintaining eye contact. I saw, you mentioned to be brief and you had a signal for a pause if uh, it wasn't brief enough. And you spoke in terms of asking for what you want, which is the uh, referring to your wish versus your frustration. Right. Um, is there any other tips or things that you've developed over the years of applying this that would also help us uh, do this correctly? Yes. Um, something that I love is having a calendar and on the odd day, of every month, one, three, five, seven. One of you is responsible for making sure you're going to bed feeling great about each other. And on the even days, the other one of you is in charge of making sure the relationship is happy at the end of the day. And that way both people are taking responsibility. So so if there is a blip that suddenly you you have a problem during the day, you check the calendar and see whose turn it is to be. We call it on duty versus off duty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the on duty person gets flowers right. or, or gets um, writes a poem. I've gotten some poems recently. Yeah. And, um, or or, or uh, tells a joke, like, can we tell some jokes before we're going to bed? Or yeah. That might not be the right thing. But. But, but push that a little because what you want to do when, you're, when it's on your duty is to be sure the energy at the end of the day is positive. Yeah. And you may have to tell jokes. You may have to turn somersaults. You may have to watch a funny movie. Yeah, watch, watch Anything to YouTube get your thing. brain out of endorphin, out of uh, cortisol, which is the fear chemical, into an endorphin, which is the connecting chemical. And there are lots of ways to do that. In anything that's funny, fun, positive, and so forth, does it? And the reason for that, it sounds like it's kind of silly, but the reason for that is your brain doesn't go off of defense until it's feeling uh, positive neurochemicals running through the bloodstream. And you, we have to run those things through it, and we can do it with a simple behavior. Uh, Thank you very hi. much. Uh-huh. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. And it looked like you got most of them down. Harville and Helen, thank you both so much. I'm seeing a lot of smiling faces in these uh, little boxes here. And so I feel like people got some really great, helpful hints today on how they might be able to move forward. Um, I love these two so much. And part of the reason is because they are um, such vulnerable and honest teachers. I think when you're talking about the human experience and especially in intimate relationships, having people model in such a real way uh, makes it easier for everyone. And so we love you guys. We're so grateful you joined us today and we want you to stay safe and well down there in Texas. But thank you all for joining us and thank you to Harville and Helen for being with us today. Thanks, Carol and Omega, and all of you who came. Yes, bravo, we are, Omega. We are for honored doing something like this to uh, help help others. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>